Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video uh, is a Tuesday tips video and today I'm going to be sharing with you um, a couple of tips or ways that we have simplified our homeschool. So if you're interested in hearing those, be sure to stick around. Some of what I'm going to talk about today I've kind of talked about in previous videos, but I wanted to kind of expand a little bit on it um, and really kind of make a video dedicated to uh, this kind of update or change or shift or whatever you want to call it um, and kind of give you guys my, my thought process behind kind of how I simplified or what what things I, I have put into practice that would make homeschool simpler for me. So hopefully you guys will find this helpful. I did write um, a couple of notes down because I didn't want to leave anything out. Um, and of course, this is just what has worked for me um, and for us, really. It's not going to work for everyone. Not everyone has the same thoughts, feelings, opinions, all the things. Uh, and so, yeah, this is just what works for me. You know, hopefully it will, some of these things maybe will help you guys. It's not an exhaustive list. Uh, it's just a couple of things that kind of I came up with that have helped me kind of keep things simple around here. The first thing or first tip, and it's, these are kind of tips but kind of really just more of like my thoughts and opinions sort of, um, but I guess they could be considered tips. So anyways, the first thing here on my list is I stopped trying to keep up. Um, and I had mentioned this in sort of in my thoughts and reflections video, but I only have one child. Um, as you all know, if you have been here around for, uh, been around for any length of time, you know, I only have one child. And so I don't need all of the things. I, I don't, I don't have these, these different levels and I don't need different activities to, to have other kids work on while I'm, while I'm moving around. Like I just, I don't have that. And so what... I'm doing in my home and what really I have to offer you guys on YouTube is going to be different. Um, I, I don't have a lot of, of things like that. We, I try not to have a lot of just extras. I try not to overwhelm with subjects and, and things like that. So yeah, that, that is one big thing was just trying not keeping up with what other people are doing. Even if you have multiples, you don't always have to do the extras. Like there's a there's a season for those things. Um, or maybe your scheduling looks different. Maybe you do, you know, the first half of the year is just your core curriculum. And then the second half is just fun extras. Maybe during the summer is when you do all of your fun extras and you go a little bit slower core curriculum during whatever you consider your school year or it looks different for everyone. And that's the beauty of homeschooling. But I, I know that it can get very overwhelming and uh, it's almost like an adult homeschool version of peer pressure. Like, but all these people are doing these things and I, I feel like I'm not doing enough or I feel like it works so well for, you know, these other five families. Why doesn't it work well for us? Because you're not one of those five families and it's just different. Everybody's lifestyle and family dynamics and even the area that you live in and your climate and, you know, things like that, things that you don't think about, it all plays a part. Yeah, I feel like that, that makes, um, a huge huge deal and not not getting into that comparison you know this person does five core subjects with their kids and I only do three okay so do your other two at a different time or you know I just yeah I mean I know that's easier said than done but that made a big difference for me like stop trying to do what everybody else is doing do what works for you 
And that kind of leads me into kind of my next point or my next tip is I, I figured out what's most important, like at my daughter's current level and at her current age, what are the most important things that I want to be dealing with or that I want to be teaching or maybe, maybe even, um, areas that we need to focus, character development, um, you know, chores around the house, things, things like that count to me as schooling, right? I'm, I'm raising up a future adult. And so if I want her to learn how to do laundry and wash dishes, then those are things that I'm counting as schooling because I'm teaching them just like I'm teaching her, you know, how to read and write. And so, um, those things count as school, but so, I just kind of made a mental list and then I kind of flipped through um, or kind of sorted through our curriculum, so, like spelling, handwriting. Um, we're still working on um, some responsibility for her, um, her getting in the habit of waking up in the morning, coming to me, we eat breakfast and then her going to get dressed, brush her hair, brush her teeth, get ready for the day. Like those types of things We're we're still working on, I don't know what you what you call those or how you classify those but those are those are some of the things that we focus on when it comes to like in here in the classroom our focus is going to be more on um slowing down with gather round let's really dive into those because we really enjoy those um i don't know what that looks like yet I'm still working on that um, and it's going to take me a while we're going to have to go through a few more units and try a couple different things and I'm okay with that. Um, we got the My Story K so she can learn more about her family and her her surroundings and different countries and cultures and learning more of, of the world and, and sort of her place in it. And then my other subject focus is her relationship with the Lord and cultivating that and nurturing that and planting those seeds and kind of guiding her and directing her on a daily basis everything outside of that are just extras at this point. I'm not saying they're they're not important, but just where we are currently, they're less important. Like I'm not as concerned with math. Are we going to do math every day? Yeah, but if we happen to skip a day because we were really having a character issue, then it's going to be okay because that character issue t took precedence that day over the math curriculum. Does that make sense? Ho hopefully you guys are, are understanding what I'm saying here. So I think that was a really good way to put things really kind of in perspective. I feel that homeschooling is more than just what happens inside of a curriculum book. And while those are extremely helpful and they are tools that we will absolutely need at some point, in these younger formative years that I have with her, it there are things at this point that are that are more important. Um, and so trying to focus on those versus okay, let's get through this unit. Okay, let's get through these books. Let's make sure we're doing our pages. Like, sure, I I want to eventually get to that place, but I there are other things that are are going to be more important um, that we're going to have to just kind of handle as they come. My last point here um, is that this is why we chose to do Gather Round. By we, I mean me. Uh, but my daughter loves Gather Round also. But it is one of the reasons that I love them is everything is together in one curriculum. We are um, learning by topics. My daughter has the opportunity to pick topics that she thinks she's going to enjoy. This is why we we make a list kind of at the beginning of the year so I can sort of plan or as I see books on sale or things like that, I can I can go ahead and add those to my library because we, we still are building our home, homeschool library. Um, but I don't buy all of the units up front because things may change or she may think that she wants to do something out of else or there may be a new unit that comes out that she says she wants to do instead of this you know the next one we had on the list and so I like to be flexible that way I like to be able to meet her where she is and if that's what she wants to do 
then that's what we'll do. And I know that she's getting a little science. She's getting a little history. She's getting um, a little bit of art. There's a little bit of everything in there for her. Um, and again, that keeps it really simple. And I know Gather Round isn't for everyone. It doesn't work for everybody. I get it. I completely understand. That's just one of the reasons that we love it and that I chose to use it was because it did, it does and did work so well for us. Now, yes, I am adding in a couple of things this year, but they're very specific and very intentional. Um, and again, I don't really know how it's, how it's all going to flow together, to be completely honest. We probably will just dive in and we'll figure it out as we go because that's usually the way it goes. And you know, your best laid plans, don't always work out the way that you intend. So we're just going to jump in and see what happens. But I'm doing a Bible curriculum because yes, there is Bible in included in Gather Round. But I, I'm looking for something just a little bit more because one of my main important focuses, like I mentioned in my previous tip, is building and guiding her and nurturing her relationship with the Lord. And so in order to help us do that, I wanted to find some kind of little curriculum. It's minimal. I don't have a lot of pressure on myself to do that. That was an intentional purpose. And then the same thing with the My Story. It's, it, sure, it's considered a social studies, but it's her, her life, her story, her place in the world, how, how does that look? What does the world look like around her? Um, introducing her to different cultures and languages and all of that kind of stuff, I feel is formative and it's so important at her, at her age. Um, and again, not a lot of pressure on that. If we get one or two lessons done a week, then we did great. Um, I had anticipated that My Story K was going to be our spine and that we were gonna kind of work everything else around that. I'm not feeling that way anymore after having looked through the curriculum. I'm thinking it's going to be more of a fun extra with Gather Round still being more of our spine. Um, but again, I don't know. I don't know, I'll have a video, y'all know, I'll keep you updated. So if you are looking to simplify things in your homeschool, these are just some of my Kind of thoughts, opinions, things that just happen to work for us at this season. Um, I think it's really more of a, a mindset change than it is a physical change. I think once you once you get it in your head, um, you know what what you need to do to simplify, or you really make the choice to simplify. Then after that, it's just kind of figuring out what works. Kind of re just changing up your 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 processes and um you know just making those adjustments but i feel like it like when you made the decision to homeschool it was kind of like that where it, it felt almost harder to make the decision to homeschool than it was to actually start homeschooling not keep homeschooling because sometimes that gets hard um and there are doubts and fears and worries and things that come with continuing to homeschool. Um, and there's those things at the beginning, but hopefully you guys know what I'm saying. It's, it's almost like making that decision sometimes can be a little bit more worrisome and have more fears attached versus once you actually get in it and you're like, wow, sure, there are fears and worries, but not as much as I had at the beginning when I was trying to make the decision. I feel like it's kind of like that. So that is it for today's video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you soon.